There are four different skin findings that are associated with cervical cancer. Before we talk about those four different skin findings, let's discuss what cervical cancer is and some of the more common symptoms of this particular cancer. So cervical cancer is a cancer of the cervix. And the cervix is going to be the end of the uterus where the uterus meets the vagina. Now, cervical cancer is going to be primarily caused by human papillomavirus or HPV and especially types 16 and 18. These have the highest risk. And there are some lower risks with other types of HPV, including types 6 and 11. We can also see an increase in risk from individuals who have had or do continue to have an infection with trichomoniasis. This is the third to fourth most common gynecological cancer worldwide. And this particular cancer is more prevalent in developing countries due to poor screening standards. And the average age of onset for this cancer is 52 years of age. Now, some of the more common symptoms of cervical cancer include vaginal discomfort, dysuria, or burning sensation when urinating, and back pain. These can all occur in cervical cancer patients. Now, we're going to discuss four different skin findings that have been associated with cervical cancer, but these are going to be mostly rare findings. So we'll first talk about the most common one, and that is skin metastases. So skin metastases are going to be due to the cervical cancer spreading beyond the cervix to the skin. It metastasizes to the skin and causes skin nodules, which are raised skin lesions. Now, these particular skin lesions can come in different sizes. They're going to be firm. They're going to be painless. If you were to push on them, they're not going to cause pain generally. They can have varying colorations, so they can look like the surrounding skin, so they can have the same color as the surrounding skin, or they can be a bit darker in coloration. In some cases, they may have a concave depression on the top of them. They can be found in different parts of the body, including the head, the torso, and the hands as well. We can see them on the hands in some cases. And these are going to occur in up to 1-2% to of patients who have cervical cancer, but it's going to occur in advanced stages, so after the cancer is spread from the cervix. Now, another possible skin finding we can see is something called cutaneous lymphangitis carcinomatosis. So this is going to be a very rare type of metastasis. This is where the cancer cells, again, leave the cervix, and then they block some lymphatic drainage. So this is one particular skin finding that has been more associated with cervical cancer than others. It mimics contact dermatitis. So it can have a very reddened erythematous, and it can be pruritic, meaning that it can be itchy as well. There may be some burning sensation here too with this. And what we can see is that it can occur on different parts of the body as well. We can see it on the arm. We can see it on the torso. Another possible skin finding that is, although more rare and less associated with cervical cancer, but it has been described in certain case reports, is perineoplastic acrokeratosis. This is also known as Bazex's syndrome. This is where there's thickened skin on the palms of the hands, so this is what keratoderma means, it's thickened skin. And it can occur with what we call peronychia, but in the absence of infection. So this is what peronychia looks like here. So what we can see is that we can have very reddened, swollen, and tender around the edges of the nail. Most of the time when we have perinicchia, it's going to be due to infection. But in the case where we have perineoplastic acrokeratosis, we can have this particular finding even without infection. So it's going to be due to the cancer itself. So again, we're going to see thickened skin on the palms of the hands. So we can see here. And we can also see in some cases perinicchia. So this reddened, swollen, tender area around the nail. Now, this is not, again, very associated with cervical cancer. It's more likely to occur in squamous cell carcinoma of the lungs. So this is important to point out here. And then the fourth skin finding we can see in cervical cancer is perineoplastic dermatomyositis. So this can occur, although it's going to be very rare in cervical cancer. We can see polymyositis. So we could see, in some cases, weakening of the proximal muscles. And we can also see dermatomyositis. This is what we're going to focus on here. Dermatomyositis is going to be findings on the skin. We can see it on the face. So we can see what we call a heliotrope rash. This is where there's reddening around the eyes, on the eyelids, and even on the cheeks. We can also see what we call Gautrin's papules. So we can get these raised, rough skin lesions on the knuckles. So we can see them here on the hands. And we can also see, in some cases, shawl sign. Shawl sign is where there's a reddening around the neck. So this is going to be due to exposure to sunlight. 
So again, this is the heliotrope rash, Gautrin's papules, and Schalsheim. So this is another finding that is quite rare and again, only reported very rarely in cervical cancer, but it can be reported more commonly in other types of cancer. We can see this in many different types of cancer. If you want more information, please check out my other lessons on the skin findings in different types of cancer. Please also check out my full lesson on cervical cancer if you want more information on how it's diagnosed and treated. Please also consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.